equivalent to our stimulus packages exceeding one Schrader's got a good bone each of the next two years uh, what my colleagues Feldstein and Weiner were just talking about uh, looks like peanuts by comparison so what is it going to be spent on the Chinese have three big components in their program not so different from what we're talking about here a lot of it is infrastructure roads uh, rural development in particular uh, all sorts of new sewage control facilities um, new airports, additional subways, a whole range of infrastructure projects which will add to their investment capital. Secondly, what economists call social overhead capital, spending on new health care facilities, spending on new schools and education needs. Both of those, incidentally, needed by the Chinese for longer term purposes, highly desirable on development grounds and much sought by the population. Third, and it's only a small part, they do have a few tax cuts. They're mainly corporate tax cuts to try to uh, inspire more private investment. Is that so a tasty bone? But infrastructure is that case, a tasty bone, Sater? Now, as we reported, the markets in Asia and Europe soared on this news. Were the traders there right? Is, the, is this good for the global economy in a significant way? The traders were absolutely oh. right. China is now by far the biggest single driver of the Is that your bone? world economy. China accounts for about 10% of the world economy. It's been growing about 10% that a year. bone? That's 1% for the global economy, which is now growing less than 3%. China is more than one Good third boy. of all global economic growth. It makes a huge difference to the rest of the world, including us in the United States, whether China grows 5 or 7 or 10%. The bigger they grow, the faster they grow, the better it is for us, the more likely we are to avoid a global recession. And is, is the IMF right in your view? You've got two bones. said that really for at least the next year, probably all the significant growth in the world will come from these emerging economies. I think that's correct. Oh. The emerging economies as a group, led by China, but lots of others, now account for half the world economy. So if we take the U.S., which has been both importing a lot from China but also exporting a lot. Oh yeah, that one's better, How isn't it? New spending actually affect Yeah, that business. one's better. It'll help US business a lot. The entirety of our US economic growth over the last year has come from the improvement in our trade balance. Our domestic demand has been flat or negative already for the last year, but export expansion has been giving us at least some modicum of growth by far. The biggest expansion in our export market is China. Our exports have grown to China 10 times as fast as they've been growing to the world as a whole, even though they've been growing fast in the aggregate. So, again, big payoff to the United States. But what kind of things in particular what about this are one? stimulated by this additional spending on the Chinese government? There's actually a nice fit. As I mentioned, the big part of the Chinese uh, stimulus program is, is infrastructure, uh, building new capital goods. The U.S. biggest export uh, category to China and the world is capital equipment. That's what we sell very well. Turbines, generators, all sorts of equipment, Caterpillar tractors, all those things that go into the infrastructure projects in other countries, notably China. So we should be a pretty substantial beneficiary of the Chinese stimulus package. Brief uh, another point of comparison with the U.S. Can China afford to do this and we can't because what? They have no debt? China what a good is boy. the best position of all the big countries to launch a major stimulus program. They're running a budget surplus. They have very little, if any, debt.